The following Mohl's question reads that when SOCl2 is reacted with the carboxylic acid to produce uh, an acyl chloride, two acidic gases are formed. Uh, so there's, there's a reaction going on, SOCl2 reacting with carboxylic acid, and they've given you uh, the products as well. Now, uh, the question reads that one gram sample of carboxylic acid and uh, carboxylic acid RCOH was treated in this way, and the gases were absorbed in 60 cm cube or 0.5 mole per dm cube NOH and excess. So what's happening over here is, what is NOH reacting with? These two gases are acidic gases. So both of these gases are going to be absorbed uh, by the alkali, which is basic. And you're being asked, right, equations for the reactions between NOH and HCl. So this reaction is fairly obvious, NOH plus HCl, 1 ratio 1, NaCl and H2O, that's also 1 ratio 1. And you're being asked to write the reaction of NOH with SO2, which is going to be slightly tricky because... Uh, when you write equation with an acidic oxide like SO2, think of it as if you're reacting it with the acid that it's going to eventually form if it mixes in water, which is sulfurous acid. So SO2, uh, when you write it, uh, when write the reaction of this base with uh, SO2, think of it as an acid and the product is going to be uh, Na2, SO3 plus H2O. SO3 is 2 minus, so Na is plus 1, so it's going to be Na2SO3. You need to balance this reaction, so it's going to be 2 NaOH. And the water and oxygen atoms would be balanced as well. So these are my two equations. So remember, phosphorus oxides, sulfur oxides, think of them as acids when you're writing equations. Now the question is uh, that he reacted it with 60 cm cube of 0.5 mole per dm cube NaOH, which is in excess. I have also, uh, using the formula concentration into volume, the concentration... Uh, was given 0 0.5 mole per dm cube and the volume was also given for NOH. So I've been able to figure out uh, the moles of excess NOH that I've added. Uh, so it's uh, volume 60 divided by 1000 in dm cube multiplied by the concentration. It comes out to be 0 0.03 moles. Uh, so this part is uh, the excess. N so this, these are the moles that were added NOH that reacted with HCl and SO2. But there's going to be leftover NOH as well because it is in excess, which means that not all of it would have reacted. So the remaining leftover NaOH, the excess NaOH, is was then titrated with 0.5 mole per dm cube H plus 1. So it's it's an acid that's being added and it required 10.8 cm cube of H plus 1 solution to reach the end point. Now you're being asked to calculate the total number of moles of NaOH that reacted with the SO2 and HCl. So to answer this part, I have already figured out my excess moles that I initially added. So the moles of NaOH that were initially added were 0.03. So I've copied that over here. So these were the initial moles of NOH that were added. Now we need to figure out uh, the leftover NOH that uh, was later titrated with this H plus 1 ions. Now the reaction of NOH with H plus 1, this reaction is going to be 1 ratio 1. Think of H plus 1 as any, uh, any monobasic acid like HNO3. Uh, H plus 1, OH minus 1, they would react to produce water. So it's going to be 1 ratio 1. So the quantity of H plus 1 is given, it's mentioned the concentration is 0 0.5 mole per dm cube, uh, so it's going to be 0 0.5 moles would be concentration multiplied by the volume which is 10.8 cm cube, which should be in dm cube, so I'm going to divide that by 1000. And I'm getting 0 0.0054 moles. And the same moles, they would be the moles of NOH as well because it's 1 ratio, 1. So NOH is going to have exactly the same moles. So these are my leftover moles. So these are the initial moles that I added and these are the leftover excess moles that were later used, uh, the remaining moles that were used in titration at the end. So what were the moles that reacted with these or, or underwent the reaction? So what were the moles of NOH that were actually taking part in the reaction? So initially you added 0 0.03 moles, writing it up to three signal figures. I'm going to subtract it with the leftover moles. So the moles remaining at the end are 0 0.0540 moles. And the answer that I'm going to get for this is, so I'm getting 0 0.0246 moles. These are the moles that have actually reacted. So initially, this, these many moles were added. Uh, the remaining moles were this much. So I subtracted the two, and these are the moles that actually took part in the reaction. And in the third part, you have to calculate the number of moles of carboxylic acid that produced SO2 and HCl. So we need to go back. I now know that 0 0.0246 moles uh, took part in the reaction. So let's go back and if you look carefully at these reactions, now HCl and SO2 were neutralized with NOH. So in total, if you look at these equations, HCl and SO2 that we made, 
uh, what is the total and if you combine the two equations uh, the HCl and the SO2 that were produced in the first reaction, they're being neutralized by NOH. So what is the total moles of uh, NOH that were needed? One was required to neutralize the HCl, two were required to neutralize the SO2. So the total amount of NOH that was needed were three moles. So the moles that we have calculated that took part in the reaction is 0 0.0246. So these moles are 0 0.0246 moles. So I'm going to use this ratio. Uh, that because I know that SO2 and HCl, they react, combined, they react with 3 moles of NOH. So I can figure out the moles of HCl, that would be 3 times less. And the moles of uh, uh, SO, the moles of carboxylic acid would also be 3 times less. So using ratios, it's going to be 0 0.0246 moles divided by 3. And the value that I'm getting is uh, 0 0.0246. Divided by 3 gives me 0 0.082 moles. So that's the moles of carboxylic acid that are taking part in the reaction. In the next part, we are now being asked to find, figure out the MR of the carboxylic acid. So we have the moles 0 0.0082 moles. Uh, the mass that was used for carboxylic acid was mentioned somewhere. If you look carefully, uh, there's this mass given over here. It's a 1 gram sample. So let's go back. And we know that moles is equal to the mass, which is 1 gram, divided by the MR. So we can, using this formula, moles equal to mass over MR, we can figure out the MR now. And this value comes very close to 122. So I'm going to round it off. Uh, the MR of carboxylic acid is 122. And I now need to figure out what the R group is. Uh, how many carbon and hydrogen atoms does the R group contain? Uh, so it's going to be... The formula is CNH2N plus 1 and COOH. If I add them up, this should be equal to 122. So it's going to be 12 into N plus hydrogen has a mass of 1 into multiplied by 2N plus 1. Carboxylic acid is 12 plus 16 plus 16, that's uh, 32. This, this is equal to 45, which would be equal to 122. Now using my calculator, I'm going to figure out what the value of N is going to come out to be. Now, when I do this, uh, I'm assuming that it's a normal uh, carbon chain with a carboxylic acid group, uh, which it probably isn't because I'm not getting the right answer. I'm getting N in decimals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of uh, this as, uh, think of it as a carboxylic acid with benzene. So let's say this is C6H5 and COH. Uh, now, if you total this, this actually does come out to be 122, which means uh, that it was a benzene for C6H5. That was the only option I had because having a straight carbon chain was not going to give me any whole numbers. So I wasn't getting a very correct value. So the only option was that it wasn't an alkyl chain. It was actually benzene that was attached with the carboxylic acid.